Hey all, it's Hunter. In this video, I'll be showing you Fetch, a new feature that allows you to harness the power of APIs without needing any code. Fetch lets you keep your site super fast while also adding dynamic data from a backend. I'll show you some examples now to help illustrate the power of this. Let's start simple with one of the first examples of dynamic info on a website, a view counter. If we select the text layer with the zero on it, we can go to the content property, and that's where you'll find the new option to add a fetch. In the fetch UI, we're greeted with an input, and in here we can put a URL to any API endpoint. To help getting started, we have a few example endpoints built in. These are great examples of the kind of things fetch should be used for. Really dynamic data that is either unique to a user or cannot be known at the time of publishing. Rule of thumb is if it can be typed on the canvas or put into the CMS, you should do that instead as it can be better optimized for SEO. We'll use the views endpoint and select the path. When selecting the path field, Framer makes a test request to that API endpoint and builds a list of all the information that's available from that endpoint then allows you to select from within that list which piece of information you want to use for this specific fetch. In this case, we'll select the count. We heavily cache this value on the canvas, but if we preview and reload a couple times, we'll see that our view count is now working. What fetch does is when someone views your website with a fetch on it, Framer will go to that API endpoint, get that information, bring it back and display it on your website. Another common use case for APIs on a website is using the approximated city or country of the person visiting the website. For this, we can use the built-in location endpoint. If we select that and go to the path field, we can use the path field dropdown to see what bits of information are available here. In this case, we'll select city, which is Amsterdam. And that is indeed where I am right now. Now, let's say that this endpoint is either really slow or expensive for us to run. We can add a cache that says, do not refetch for this amount of time. And instead, just reuse that value that we got from the last time we actually performed the fetch. In this case, I'll use an hour because you're probably not moving around too much within an hour. And if we reload our page, we now have those two dynamic pieces of information using fetch with the location being cached for one hour. To take this a step further, let's say we have a travel website where we want to show the weather for multiple different cities. We have a component set up with a city property that we can change, and now we'll turn it into an encapsulated widget that fetches and displays the real weather information for that city. Let's start with the temperature, and we will add a fetch to this using the weather endpoint. And what you'll see different here is we'll see a colon and the word city. Whenever you use the colon in a fetch, it creates a variable that you can edit using a field below. So we can type in the word Amsterdam here or we can assign a variable that's available in our component. In this case, we can use that city variable that we have set up and are already using in our component. This will mean whenever we change the property on our component, it'll also update the fetch and get the information for that specific city. We can select Celsius and do the same for our description. I'll speed it up a bit. Let's preview our component. And it looks good. We now have the live weather. But Framer renders the fallback value while these fetches are loading. This is great for simple fetches, but with components, we now give you the ability to have more control over what that loading state looks like. We can do this by declaring a loading variant. This is a special type of variant that only shows up once you've used a fetch in your component. Once we have that added, we can also add an error variant. These are automatically set up to show well a fetch is loading and when a fetch fails. Just like normal variants, you have full design control on how you want these to look. 
What I like to do is to delete the fetched content in the loading variant so that it doesn't appear when it's not ready yet, and then add some helpful text to the error variant. If we preview our component and refresh a couple times, we can see that new loading variant showing up while the fetch is loading. And so now that content only shows up when it's actually ready. A common pattern you see online is displaying gray boxes where there will be content while loading. I find it's best to do this as new separate layers that you conditionally display in the loading variant. We'll start by drawing some little frames in these stacks and making them position absolute and then dragging them to the size that we want. I'll style them with a gray color and a slight border radius. We'll then set them to opacity zero on the primary variant and opacity of one on the loading variant. This is nicer than using visibility as you get a smooth transition between the variants. And it's personal preference, but I like to lock these gray box layers as well when I'm done setting them up so that I can easily select the other layers again. If we preview my component again, it's looking really nice. One more tiny bit of polish we can do is adding a peer effects on the layers with the fetches. So that once that loading variant is done transitioning into the primary variant, those pieces of info will smoothly fade in. And if we preview our component again, we'll see that it is looking lovely. Now that we're done our dynamic component weather widget, we can duplicate it and change the city. And boom, right away, it shows the real weather for that city instead. And what's so powerful about this is everything is encapsulated. To use this component, you don't have to know anything about fetches. You just change the city and that's it. Where fetch really enters a new realm of possibility is using it with custom API endpoints. This allows you to work right alongside an engineer to create something new or to use one of the APIs that your company already has set up. In this example, we want to display the status of our servers on our framework site. We generally recommend putting a small backend in between like a Cloudflare worker so you can clean up the data for Framer and store any secret tokens that would be impossible to store safely on the client. So we have this small Cloudflare worker that hits our original endpoint, sets any headers that are needed, and makes sure everything's ready to go into Framer. And we'll deploy that. And there's nothing special that needs to be done to make this work in Framer. We just have a normal backend endpoint, and we can paste that URL directly into our fetch. We'll select the path for the message. And now we have our server status on our site. If we preview our site and refresh a few times, we can now see our nice loading experience and our dynamic data on our page. And for one last thing before we go, to show off other things you can do with Fetch, I also have an examples page here, which has my live listening data a live stock example, and the current moon phase with sunrise and sunset, all using dynamic data via the fetch feature. And there's a couple more cool features to point out here. In the gradient stock example, we've set the stock fetch to a cache time of 10 seconds. And this means that every 10 seconds when that cache runs out, we perform a new fetch and get the latest value. This is great for super dynamic values that you want to update all the time. Another cool feature is in the music listening example. Here we're using a fetch on the fill property of a frame to display the image for the album art. And what's cool here is that the loading variant will also wait for the image to be loaded. So you can create native feeling animations knowing that the image will fully be there. 
Since this also means you'll be seeing the image placeholder in the loading states more often, we also improved it visually so that it looks better in most designs. And that has been an introduction to Fetch. I hope you enjoy fetching. I would love to see what you build with it, and I will see you in the next one.